Yeah, yeah. So um, where to start? I'm I'm trained in ethnomusicology, so yeah. you know ethnographic uh, study, like generally speaking. Um, and I was coming. I did my PhD at the University of Chicago. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. So it was very, very much sort of influenced the, the you know the kind of cultural anthropology, the brand of cultural anthropology that's practiced there. Mm -hmm. I would say, um, and uh, and yeah, and the the dissertation project had to do with um, uh, intimacy, especially what I what I t termed straight. Mm -hmm. Sure, intimacy. So, sort of intimacy between people who don't necessarily have more yeah. formalized social ties. Yeah. Um, at, at electronic music events. So, yeah. You know, at parties, at clubs, at raves, and so right. on. Uh, and it ended up being a multi-site thing. So I was looking in Chicago, I was looking in Paris, and I was also doing work in Berlin at the time. Yeah. Um, but trying to sort of make it multi-local without making it, you know, sort of like a broad global yeah. sweep or something. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. And uh, so that was sort of the basic project and, and it ended That's up great. being very much about not just intimacy but also affect, both musical affect and other forms of affect, the transmission affect, yeah. um, uh, tactility and touch became really important concepts. Uh, oh, interesting. Sort of, as far as yeah. you know, bodily tactility right. as forms of communication, or not even communication, but forms of affective transfer. Sure, but sure. Then also, um, the music and sort of the tactile, the tactile aspects of music, especially yeah. electronic dance music. Yeah. And the Talk sort of about like the controllers aspect, and you know. stuff and yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, from from the point of view of like how the music is made, but also how it's heard and perceived. Gotcha. Uh, you know, sort of the visceral qualities of the of the sound itself, and at least one of the arguments I make is that also the the aesthetics of electronic music for for quite some time has been really oriented towards textures and grains and that sort of thing. Yeah. So cool. As a result, as a result of that, I ended up very much reading the reading out of um, you know Eve Sedgwick and her yeah. stuff on. Touch and texture but, but I guess and affect, yeah, that was yeah. I guess my question really is: Is that because you yourself were um, finding yourself on the dance floor often, or was it like you know? I mean, I mean, sometimes the things that we study are and are not related to like what it, you know how we express ourselves. But I'm I'm just totally curious if that was kind of part of the genesis of of your sure. interest in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I certainly would describe myself to some degree at least as. Um, uh, what's the word now? Not like a uh, native ethnographer. No, there's another. Uh, there's a better term for this now. Okay. But for somebody who's who's doing ethnography in the world or in a community that they've been part of for some sure. time, well before okay. they gotcha. established themselves as academics. Gotcha. Uh, and, in, and I think in a lot of ways that, that was very crucial for me getting the kind of access I got to these yeah. scenes. You know, especially, and I assume this is something you're familiar with yeah. as well when it comes to scenes that are some really hidden or at least have some sense of distance from a mainstream sure. that's often self-protective. Sure. Um, it's often really important for you to be able to sort of establish yourself in some sense as um, as somebody that can be trusted with right. information and right. insight and so on. So right. yeah, I very much, um, I was right. uh, involved in the rave scene in North America in the late 90s, uh, you know, and then stuck around yeah. as the rave scene sort of imploded and turned into a sort of a hybrid club scene for yeah. a while. You know, and uh, I very much stayed involved in those scenes um, as I was going through my various uh, sort of academic stages, you know, a bachelor's, MA, and then eventually right. a PhD. Right. Uh, and it wasn't really until I was going through my master's that I transitioned from doing much more classic music history to this sort of ethnographic stuff. That was when I sort of realized, oh, I can do a project on electronic music if I yeah, want. Yeah, but that's so exciting. What an exciting revelation to have, you know. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. It was very, uh, very freeing in a sense, but it was also, yeah, there, there was something really nice about um, having this moment to realize that I, I already had a whole series of expertises, so to speak, that I've built up in a yeah. very unsystematic way, in a very indirect way, uh, but also in a very profound way that I could actually access and make use of and, yeah. know, and try to, you know, formalize, make explicit, and so right. on. So that very much informed uh, how I went into the, the project, the, the PhD project. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and as a result, you know, participant observation was one of the main ways that I did what I did. Uh, I, I often ended up spending large amounts of time just going to music events and very slowly building up social networks wherever I was, and especially like trust networks, like just networks of people who actually yeah. would, you know, trust me. So that yeah. later on, I can I could ask for more formalized interviews, like one-on-one -on -one chats and so on right. that that would be recorded or something along those right. lines. But that would often come months after I later had later. Arrived. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. 